What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Dead Life. Corvette C5 electrical gremlins. It's bound to happen, especially if you're lucky like me and you have a pre-2001 C5. So of course the C5 was introduced in 1997. So if you basically have a 1997 through 2000, expect to have electrical problems. It is what it is. So what are we gonna get into? My uh, instrument cluster is, is uh, scrolling which is usually a telltale sign of you need a new instrument cluster, you need new DIC controls, which are the little buttons on the side that control the instrument cluster, bad grounds, bad electrical, tons of issues. Let's take a look, enjoy the video. And we're here inside the C5 Corvette. So what exactly is going on? So let, let's take a look. Basically I'm getting service active handling and ABS and traction control issues. Now, the first thing, if you guys are a C5 owner, uh, that I recommend looking at that I will look at, but I don't have time right now to jack up the car, is your wheel speed sensor, which is connected to your uh, wheel hubs. Of course, there are four sensors. God bless GM, they had to put it on every wheel, you know, just more money. But, makes sense, it actually serves a purpose. So let me show you what's going on when I start the car. So guys, as you see, check engine light is only on right now because I didn't actually physically start the car, but this will serve for the same demonstration purposes. You start the car, you're driving, all the gauges are fine when the car started running, oil pressure works, water uh, coolant temp works, battery works, obviously the car's not started, gas sensor works. However, traction control, ABS, and then service acting handling, service traction will, will just keep scrolling. Now, you come over here to the DIC controls. You used to be able to hit reset, uh, E to M, your trip odometer, different options, gauges, check your fuel consumption. It's all dead. Problems. Problems. So, in pops the accordion wiring in the door jam, which is on each side, and my catch joint. So let's take a look. All right, guys. So. How would you know if your accordion wiring could be the issue? Well, let me demonstrate. So again, I'm gonna put the key in the on position, right? We're gonna come over here. We're gonna try the window switch. Well, first let's try the lock switch. <laughs> and of course it works. Well, normally it doesn't work. Normally the window does not go up and down. But what does that mean? That means there's a high probability that in here, as you see, there's water. There's water sitting in here, just causing a short. So what do we have to do? First, let's disconnect the battery, especially because there's water in there. So I don't uh, get zapped. See what we got here. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, we're going to disconnect. Uh, the battery tender alligator clips and then let's disconnect the negative terminal on the battery and let's go from there of course just like working on a house it is always recommended to disconnect negative terminal on a battery before you touch anything electrical so let's disconnect that and push that aside and I mean, really push that down there. Make sure it's not touching any metal. See how it kind of jumps back? So yeah. All right guys, so the first step is we gotta fish this accordion tube. You can see right here. Let's fish it out to get access to the wiring harness and the, and the door frame here. All right, look how dirty it is. Alright guys, so the first thing I'm going to notice and point out here is, I mean, obviously, this can't be good. You just see all the 
I mean, look how damp that is. Now, again, obviously, car's outside, but I mean, think about it every time it rains or you wash the car, like, that's not good. Come on. So what do we got here? So here's the blue connector that we're trying to get to. So let's pull that out farther. All right, guys, so just like the write-ups on Corvette forms, you don't have much play, as you can see. You only can really pull out this connector about that far. But let's pop it open and see if we can see any bent connector pins. Let's see if we could do this one-handed while I video here. All right, guys, so looking at the connectors and the actual pins here, I don't think they look bent. I'm going to put a picture for reference uh, on the how-to right now so I can show you what a bent one looks like. Versus what mine look like. Let me make sure it's focusing good for you guys. All right. So that's the female side and then the male end. They're all there. Let's turn it around so you can see better. They're all there. They all look clean. They all look straight. So what I do is, and this really isn't a fix, but just for the heck of it, I'm gonna try to run some electrical tape because again, you can only go so far. And let's see what this connector is. I can't really get to that one, can we? Oop, let's see what that one is. Oop. Check out this one real quick. Watch, the car's gonna blow up. All right guys, so the pins on both connectors look decent question in this one right here so i'm gonna grab my pick real quick and again i apologize probably not gonna be able to show you but let's report back all right guys so what i'm doing is i basically off camera took my little pick and i just worked on basically touching all them making sure they were all tight the connectors the pins if you will making sure they're all as straight as possible uh and then i'm running new electrical tape because I figured having wet electrical tape is just keeping wetness in, so that's no good. So that could be something as simple as that. I mean, again, GM, C5 Corvette, electrical gremlins, usually it's easy fixes, so here's the hoping. Also, I took all the electrical tape off on this, uh, this connector as well, the black connector, and I'm just gonna run a line of electrical tape there. But the other thing that I'm doing is I'm taping the end of the blue connector, which is the one we're working on here, to try to prevent any water from seeping into the connector part. I don't care if it's on the wires. I mean, I do, but it is what it is. I mean, I didn't make the car GM did, but for instance here, you'll see kind of building almost like a tent or a roof, if you will, to keep it out of the actual connector. So let's connect this one up. All right, guys, so I have the, I have the accordion tube back on. I have both connectors taped up, reconnect it. You can kind of see how I ran the tape even over the actual seam where it connects. So let's fish this back in, hook the battery up and see if anything changed. I'm not having the high expectation that this is going to be the magical fix, but I do feel better knowing that there was water in here. So clearly there's a reason that that's happening. So let's see if this will work. Fingers crossed guys. You never know. Let's go. Let's go. Let's connect the battery. So make sure your battery is extremely tight. Again, electrical connection issues. Could be a dead battery, loose battery connection. You never know on these cars. Let's see here. All right, let's also check our positive connection. Okay. Torque down to 10 Ooga Dugas. Oh yeah, because of family. All right, guys. Moment of truth. <laughs> Did that do anything? Let's start it up and see. Did nothing. All right. Or did it? interesting we may have at least temporarily fixed this side lock and window let's see here all right window window up let's come around the driver's side so now the main problem usually comes 
Look at this. Driver's side switch is working. So maybe, maybe that's a go. Let's try the lock. Lock, lock. Okay, okay. So we might have actually fixed the lock and window mechanism on the passenger side just by put uh, drying it out, putting on new electrical tape, and also messing with the uh, connectors a little bit. So now what we have to resort to is the battery grounds. So let's disconnect the battery again. So again, if you're gonna mess with electrical, make sure you disconnect the battery. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here, driver's side. So here's your washer fluid uh, tank. You're gonna see your hood strut. This is one of your connectors. So of course it's right on the frame rail. You're gonna grab a 10 millimeter. Again, the battery's been disconnected. So, we're gonna take a look at this, and we're gonna grab some sandpaper and see if we can make a better connection. Again, why not try the free, easy stuff? You already have sandpaper, you already have your tools lying around. Let's not throw money at the car. Let's see if we could just do some of these simple fixes that are recommended. All right, and you see, it's not that bad, at least so it seems, but to tell you the truth, it is a little old and rusted under there. So let's go grab some sand. Let's just give a little scuff here. all cleaned up nice now let's see if we can get around here this one's gonna be a little tough but and don't forget to sand the back of the nut so sand at the back of the nut sand at the two uh, connectors and the backs of the connectors also and also the post there. All right, so let's reconnect this the way that GM did it. All right. Let's connect this bad boy here. All right, now you're gonna grab your 10 millimeter and we're gonna torque it down. I wish I had my extension, but I do not. It's still a good day though, because I found my 10 millimeter. So I mean, <laughs> perspective, at least I have something here. All right, let's see if we can keep tightening this. Let's try to come at it from over here a little more. All right, all right guys, so first ground, check. Driver's side one, that one's done. All right guys, for the heck of it, Let's try it after just cleaning the driver's side ground. There we go. Anything different? All right. All right, nothing yet. All right, guys, so no change after cleaning the driver's side ground. So now let's head over here to the passenger side where the coolant tank is. So the front of the coolant tank here, You'll have a ground right there, right here. So another 10 millimeter. So let's pop this ground off and get to work on this one. All right, guys, the passenger one was a mess. But as you can see here, cleaned it up, sand them both up, sand at the back of the nut again. So we're gonna put that back on. Battery is reconnected. Passenger side ground is cleaned. Damn it. All right, guys, so we're gonna end the video there. That's gonna be part one. Tune in next time for part two where we clean the rest of the grounds. As always, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button, give me a like. Until next time, dad life. Arr.